Welcome to Gavels Down, Voices Up, with me, Rachel King. This is where we leave convention at the courtroom door and dive into your real stories, bold and unpopular opinions, and change-making ideas that really shake the legal world up and change where change is desperately needed. I'm here to shake it up, talk about unfiltered insights, and amplify voices that need to be heard. So are you ready? Let's get it. Put the gavels down and the voices up. Welcome back to Gavels Down, Voices Up. My name is Rachel King. In this episode, we're going to dive into the often contentious world of property battles and neighbor spats. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a call from somebody saying, oh my gosh, my neighbor put up a camera and it's facing right into my backyard or, oh, their tree is dropping all sorts of leaves. I had one once where somebody called and said that the tree roots from their neighbor were actually getting so big that it was lifting the concrete of their backyard and putting pressure on the side of their pool. And they were afraid they were going to have a pool leak. That was a pretty bad one. But neighbor disputes, they can be everything from property to just bickering. Real estate disputes and disagreements with neighbors can be so stressful. Why? Because most of us don't have the luxury of just being like, I don't like my neighbor, I'm gonna move. Uh, You're kind of stuck there. And even if you have that ability, like who wants to move? Maybe you love your house. I sure love my house. So today we're going to explore strategies to resolve these issues, these neighborly disputes, or maybe they're not neighborly and that's where they're in dispute. We want to resolve them as amicably as possible and preserve peace in the community. We want to make sure that you can continue to live where you live and that your neighbor, maybe you don't care about them, but they can continue to live where they live and that you're not at every single step thinking, oh my gosh, what is my neighbor going to do next? Is my neighbor going to call the cops on me? Is my neighbor going to call animal control on me? Is my neighbor going to call the city and code enforcement on me? Is my neighbor going to file a civil harassment restraining order? which side note are very hard to get. So I think people think that having a harassing neighbor, it's going to be easy. You just pop into court, they issue a civil harassment restraining order. Sometimes people even think the court's gonna make the move. Not likely, it's not likely. I actually had one case where there was one house with a casita and the main house was owned and then the casita was being rented. The dispute was between one of the people that lived in the house, not the owner, but one of the people that lived in the main house and then the person that was renting the casita. I kid you not, they had dueling civil harassment restraining orders and both of them were granted and yet they both continued to live there, even the tenant in the casita, like why wouldn't you just move out? But anyway, continued to live there and they had to deal with still living on the same property, the same driveway, sharing the same path to get to each of their front doors. The restraining order restricted what they could and couldn't do with each other, but it did not force either party to move out. So there you have it. Sometimes neighbor disputes are awful and sometimes you're just going to have to learn how to deal with them. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to deal with them and how you can hopefully handle them to maybe bring back the, the fire instead of fueling it and hopefully live on and on and on. So let's start by understanding some of the common causes of property disputes. Again, this can be everything from boundary lines to noise complaints. Now that we're here today with all of the technology, we have uh, ring doorbells, ring cameras, all of the security systems, they are causing a huge disruption in what neighbors believe is their right to privacy. Drones are another one, your right to privacy. So let's talk about that because a lot of these things, while they are inconvenient, are not actually a violation of your rights to privacy. So disputes. Property lines, your neighbor is going to put a new fence in and maybe it infringes on your property just a tad. That's no good, right? That is a boundary dispute. In fact, when we were putting up our fence in our property, we got a bunch of them. So let's talk about this. We bought a piece of land. We wanted to fence the entire thing. So we hired a fencing company. All of the properties, nobody's houses are right on top of each other. One of the neighbors, we saw fly a drone up to our property, I mean, up into the air, scope our entire property, 
look to see where our fence line was going in, called to complain that our fence line was infringing on their property, that the temporary bags of concrete that were just set there so that the poles could be posted were laying on their ground, that the workers that were installing the fence were walking on their side of the property line while they were installing the fence. This person had no problem flying their drones all over our property in the air. What could we do about it? Well, because again, I didn't want to move. I didn't want to have a long time neighbor dispute. I said, hey, let's meet at the property line and let's talk about this. Let's see what's going on. So we did. We met at the property line. I let that neighbor explain their entire piece. And I, we discussed where our fence line was going to go. It did turn out that we were right and that we were not infringing on his property line. We did ask permission then if during the installation, our contractors could walk or set material on his property. Now, let's just clarify that the part of the property that we were walking on is not landscaped. It is wildly grown but he was very kind and generous and he agreed. That didn't stop the drone usage. I will say over the years, I have seen that same drone fly over our property quite a bit. Now what I do, it's not actually against the law though. Most drone operators do need to have a license. I suppose maybe I could get him for that, but he probably does have a license. He's like a smart dude. Airspace is not protected, right? I don't own the airspace. I just say, you know what, I'm going to live my life. And if that means I'm walking around naked and you see my naked body, maybe keep your drone on your property, though I'm not telling you to do that. But if you're going to be looking at my property, you might see some things that you don't want to see. That's all I'm saying. All right. Other kinds of property disputes like we talked about could be a tree. That's another super common one. A tree that's sort of growing on the property line at the fence. Maybe it's a cherry tree. I say cherries because many people don't pick their cherries. So they have a cherry tree. It's spilling over onto your side of the yard. It's dumping all of these cherries. You don't really like cherries, but the cherries then get mashed into your concrete and stain it. And what a mess. No matter how many times you ask your neighbor to trim it, they don't. This can be the cause of a lot of stress. In fact, you'll have people saying, oh, just cut the dang tree down. Don't cut the tree down. In many jurisdictions, you want to check with your local jurisdiction, though you can trim the tree that is over your side. But I always say before you go in and cut that tree, do the old fashioned thing and like knock on the door and say, hey, this is an issue. There is, of course, noise complaints, but I will say the biggest noise complaint that I hear about are dogs barking. I have dogs, so I uh, have received the complaint uh, a few times when I lived not on property, and I get those calls and I see them all over the social media boards. It's dogs barking. So a couple of things you can do, you can certainly call, call animal control, but I'm really a big believer that once you start getting government involved, think animal control, law enforcement, code enforcement, you're really deteriorating the neighbor relationship quite quickly. So again, before you do that, knock on the door, see if there's something you can do. You can also, for dog barking, buy some uh, deterrence. I think I saw somebody once that bought like a machine they got off of Amazon that every time the dog barked, it sent out a very high pitched noise that only the dog could hear and like that stopped the dog barking. See about what you can do. You can't poison a dog. You can't kill a dog. You can't do all of those things that yes, guys, I've heard people say they were going to do because they got annoyed with the barking. But if all else fails, you do have, and your neighbor is just being completely uh, unhelpful and unwilling to address that issue, you can certainly call animal control. My favorite, again, is these cameras because they are showing up everywhere. I've, I've participated in civil harassment restraining orders where the camera was an issue. It wasn't the only issue, but it was one of the issues. I've seen countless, 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 every time I'm in court, probably in a civil harassment restraining order, there is somebody that is suing because there are cameras that are placed facing their backyard or facing part of their property and they believe that it is a violation of privacy or I see it again on message boards. I think at least once a week on the Facebook and neighborhood um, local groups, there's somebody complaining about a 
camera that is put in place. So here's the good and the bad of the cameras. One, actually they can really serve a great purpose. They can provide perfect protection for your own house, but I've had situations where neighbors have been broken into or had some kind of trespass or their property was injured and they were able to go to another neighbor's house and say, hey, do you have camera footage? And we were able to use that camera footage to find out what happened. Also, you don't always get to say that it's an infringement on privacy. So here's where I've seen the judges come in at this. If you have, for example, one of those driveway cameras that has like a wide angle, so you're getting your neighbor across the street's driveway, maybe you're getting your neighbor on either side's part of their driveway, that's probably not a violation of privacy, right? You're really doing it to protect your house. Now, if you have a backyard camera, and again, it's angling toward your backyard, but just because of the camera angle, you're seeing over the fences a bit into neighbor's yards, probably not a violation of privacy. You buy a camera and you direct it and zoom it in maybe to the bedroom door of the other house. Yeah, that's probably not going to be allowed. Super creepy and pretty weird. Now, how it's proved is a whole nother story. But keep in mind where your cameras are placed may not automatically be a violation of privacy, but it can certainly make your neighbors uncomfortable. How I've seen people resolve these amicably is to go over and say, hey, look, I saw that you just put up some cameras. Never start with the blame. Like, I think you're snooping on me and that is a violation of my privacy. Instead, take a step back. Hey, I see you're putting up cameras. We're also thinking about putting up cameras. Can we look and see what the angles are? And also, we just wanted to see kind of where your cameras were angled. We have young children or we have some things that we would prefer not to have be on camera. Many neighbors will show you their camera angles and then you can rest assured, hey, they're not staring into our windows. They're just looking at their backyard. Open those conversations. I suppose you could get law enforcement involved, though I've never really seen them be super helpful. I've seen people go in for civil harassment restraining orders, but if the court does anything, I've typically seen judges say, all right, I'm telling you that you need to change your camera angles so that they don't focus on the backyard. However, how you actually prove that they have live feeds or are recording that is a much more difficult conversation, probably way too advanced for today's episode or podcast. When you are dealing with neighbor disputes, those are some of the ways to handle the verbal ones I would consider annoying. And now for a quick break. This episode of Gavels Down, Voices Up is proudly brought to you by King Law Firm, Attorneys at Law Incorporated. We're not just about winning cases, we're about making a difference. Whether it's family law, probate litigation, or standing up against elder abuse, we bring experience, empathy, and excellence to the courtroom. At King Law Firm, we're more than lawyers. We're your team, in your corner, advocating for your rights and making your voice heard. Visit us at thelawyerking.com and on the socials at The Lawyer King to see how we can fight for you and with you. King Law Firm, Attorneys at Law Incorporated, where your fight becomes our fight. Now let's get back to today's episode. Now, when you get into something a little bit more serious, like my neighbor put up a fence and I didn't want to pay for half of it, or my neighbor's tree roots really are about to blow out my pool and cost me a lot of money. Again, a conversation with the neighbor, but if you don't get the results that you're looking for, I think at that point, you probably want to, again, do everything you can to resolve it, but then you may need to get law, um, not law enforcement necessarily, but maybe code enforcement or an attorney involved just to say, here's what the laws are in your area. You are required to pay for half of the fence or you're not required to pay for half of the fence or, hey, you really got to do something about these trees because they're about to blow out your neighbor's pool and you're going to be super, super liable. Sometimes just talking to an attorney to understand what the legal ramifications are or what your duties are as a neighbor can be super helpful. I don't think bringing out the big guns of an attorney or restraining order are ever the starting point. If you do have a neighbor that is really high conflict, especially if you rent, I know this is like super unpopular, like move. Honestly, is there anything worse than living with or near somebody who is making it their life's duty to ruin your existence. 
and take away the peace and enjoyment that you have at your house. Like nothing to me sounds worse than that. So if there is any way that you can move, that might be something. I have had people that have actually bought houses, had somebody else move into the neighborhood that was quite problematic and ended up selling just for their own peace of mind. Obviously that would be like a last resort, but it's something to consider. Remember that the dispute that you have with your neighbor can affect the entire community. Nobody wants to be involved in a neighbor dispute. And to the extent that you have to go to court, you oftentimes have to bring in other neighbors. Be like, yeah, we've had the same problem. Yes, we've heard the dog bark. Yes, we've seen the tree and it absolutely does do this. And we're aware that Rachel has gone over and asked for it to be trimmed. You want to have a fun community. You really want to open up those communications. And while it's funny to see people that say, oh, go leave a dog shit on their porch. That's not helpful. That's probably not going to get you the results that you want. Those kind of revenge tactics, while they might be humorous, probably not very effective and may actually ultimately work against you. Remember, when you are trying to resolve a neighbor dispute, you want to keep effective communication, try and be calm, raise the objection. Like I say, with every area of law that I I practice in and every person that I meet, you want to raise your concern and provide a solution without causing accusations. You don't want to walk up and be like, you abuse your dog. You never let them in the house. They're barking all night. Or, oh my gosh, your cameras are pointed right at my house. Or, oh my gosh, you intentionally planted that big tree that took all of my sunlight. People don't react well like that you wouldn't. So instead say, Hey, did you realize this was what's going on? Can we talk about it? That's always the first step. Sometimes professional help is needed. You might need to call the police. You might need to call code enforcement. You might need to call animal control and you might need to talk to a lawyer, but I would say do the research before you start saying, I'm going to call my lawyer. I'm going to call the police. Don't say those things. Just get the information so you can take steps accordingly. Prevention is always better than having to go in and seek a solution. So again, implementing clear agreements. Hey, I see that you're putting up the fence. Actually, it's really so much, while I thought it was annoying when my neighbor put a drone up and took issue with the fence, that was the appropriate time to do it. Because what if we were wrong? What if we'd been on his property line and he let the entire fence go up and then took issue with it? Now we had this spend the time and expense to undo it. But if you can get ahead of it, that's always a really good idea. Understand the laws in your areas. These are not just state, federal, and county laws. There's actually city municipal codes and different things that you'll need to be aware of. Um, as the maybe the annoying neighbor that has the dogs that are barking, I, I say that a lot because I have dogs that bark on our property. They keep the coyotes away and they bark at the coyotes. Guess what, guys? I'm not really interested in stopping them from barking at the coyotes. You want to see if you guys can resolve this without turning it into a huge amount of drama, without bringing in the kids and the spouses and the other neighbors. Have a positive relationship with your neighbors. Have a sense of community with your neighbors. And that can really go a long way of preventing agreements. All right. So the next time you find yourself annoyed with your neighbor, which is about as likely as being annoyed with a child or a spouse, it's one of those things that's almost guaranteed to happen. Take a breath, go and have a conversation. Sometimes all it it takes is a little bit of talk. Empower yourself with the knowledge and tools to handle your property disputes and your neighbor disputes calmly and constructively. If it's not you that remains calm and constructive, go ask your spouse to be the calm one. I know my husband cannot keep cool at all. So guess who gets to be the one to have the conversations? I do. On the off chance that I'm the one that loses it, (laughs) he steps in and takes over. If you have shared a property dispute or a neighbor dispute or a disagreement or any of that with your neighbor, I would love to hear about it. I'd love to hear what the dispute was, what happened, and how you resolved it. And if you did end up needing to go into court or get a lawyer involved, that's super interesting too, because not many people hear about that. I'm fortunate to be able to say that most neighbor disputes are handled outside of court. Thanks for tuning in to Gavels Down, Voices Up. Like what you heard? Then don't just sit there. Subscribe, share, and tell me your thoughts. I'm Rachel King, bringing not just my opinions to the mic, but about the courtroom too. Your part, keep listening, keep engaging, and until next time, let's keep those gavels down and our voices up. Unmistakably up. Up.